how to sew the book cushion with Amber Makes. Make this beautiful cushion with the difference. It's a cushion that looks like a book and available in a choice of prints. Keep your book, sewing kit or latest projects safe and to hand inside the pocket. Featuring original illustrations, follow me and I'll show you how. Cutting out. Take out the fabric panel from your kit and give it a good press. Now, if you have a look at it, you can see that all the pieces are labelled and the labels are printed above each piece. You can see you've got all the pieces for the cushion, the cover. This is the lining piece. And there's the spine and the two tabs. An extra piece of fabric. Those are the two bookmark pieces and labels if you want to personalise your cushion. Once you've cut it all out, pin the label to the top edge of the right side of each place so you remember which is which during assembly. So those are the cover pieces. This is the lining. Again, you can see I've pinned the label to the top. This is the cushion front and the back. And then these are the pocket. Here's all the pages pieces. So these are made put on the edge of the cushion to look like the pages of the book. And then you've got two pieces for the tab. You've got the outer and the lining. And then the two pieces for the bookmark. And those are the labels which you can write on or embroider on if you want to personalise your cushion. You'll also need some soft toy filling like a polyester fibre fill for the cushion, some wadding to give the cover some structure and interfacing for the bookmark if you prefer. And you'll also need some snap fasteners or press fasteners for the tab. Making the pocket. Place the pocket outer and the pocket lining right sides facing and match up the top raw edges and pin together. The side and bottom edges will match as well, but just pin together either end of the top edge and then pin together along the centre, making sure the raw edges match up exactly. Now stitch together along this top edge. Once that's done, place it on your pressing mat or ironing board, open it out and press this seam open and flat. This will make it easier to get this top edge lying right on the edge if you press the seam open and flat at this stage. Once that's done, refold the pocket pieces so they are now wrong sides facing and that seam line that you just pressed open, arrange it so it lays right on the edge, just rolling it between your fingers and give it a quick press so that it's nice and straight. Now top stitch along this top edge and then tack together down the side and across the bottom and up the other side, tack within the seam allowance. Once that's done, it will look like this. And that's the pocket section finished. Now take the cushion front and place the pocket on top. So the cushion front needs to be right sides up and the cushion and the pocket right sides up. Place it on top, matching the side and bottom raw edges. And also you will see that the prints match. So whichever design you're doing, the prints will match. So arrange it slightly. It's better that the prints match, even if the raw edges are slightly off. They will meet almost depending on how you've pressed and sewn it, but do make sure that the print matches along there and then pin together down the sides and across the bottom. And once you're pinned together, tack it down the side, across the bottom and up the other side, again within the seam allowance. Now, if you want to add dividing lines to your pocket, maybe you want to put something smaller in it, draw those lines on, making sure they're vertical using an erasable pen, and then stitch from the top bottom to the top and back down again. Or just leave it open if you like. Once that's done, you can see I've tacked it in place and the pocket is now attached to the cushion front. Making the cushion. Take the four pages pieces. You've got two cushion short pages and two cushion long pages. Now take one long page and one short page, please. Now place them right sides facing so that the short ends match up. And then make sure the side and raw edges all match up. Now mark and measure a quarter of an inch from the top. You can do this using an erasable pen or just lightly in pencil. And then measure and mark 
quarter of an inch up from the bottom. These are the starting and finishing parts of your seam. Once you've marked it, then pin the two pieces together, making sure again that the raw edges are matching. Now sew together, starting at one mark and finishing exactly at the other mark. That will leave a quarter of an inch unstitched, as you can see here, either side, which will make attaching the pages a lot easier and neater. Now, once you've done that, you can join the rest of the pages in a loop, alternating them. So there's the short page piece. So take the other long page and place that on the short end. Again, measure and mark quarter of an inch from the end and then take the other short piece and put that on the end of the long piece. So you're sewing them together in a loop, alternating short and long pages and starting and finishing quarter of an inch from the edges. So now you can see, once I've sewn it, it looks like this. You can see all they're all joined together in one big pages loop with quarter of an inch unstitched at the ends. Do make sure that you've alternated the short and the long pages so that it works properly. Now take it to your ironing board and press those seams open and flat. Again, this will make assembly easier when you're joining it to the cushion front and back. So just... Take some time to press the seams open and flat. And because you've only left quarter of an inch unstitched, these unstitched edges will lay flat as well. Right, now it's all open and flat, we can start joining it on. So take the cushion front, the one that you attach the pocket to, and place the pages loop right sides down on top of the right hand edge of the cushion front with the long one of the long page pieces on top because then that will fit. Now match up that pressed open raw edge to the top of the cushion front and pin it into place. And then match the other end to the other end of the cushion front. So you'll see that where you've pressed the seam open, the bottom raw edge of that seam needs to match the bottom of the cushion front. Once you've pinned it together either end, smooth it out so that the raw edges are matching and then pin together down that side. Now you need to sew together Starting and finishing exactly on the seams, you can see where I'm showing you with the pin, start and finish reverse stitching actually on the seams, not beyond them. Once it's sewn, it will look like this. You can see there's a quarter of an inch unstitched at the top and on the bottom. Once you've done one side, turn it around. Now you're going to have the short pages part of the loop. Pin the edge of it, the right hand edge of that short pages to the bottom right hand corner of the cushion front. Again, match up the raw edges so that your seam is finishing quarter of an inch before the end. But if you just match up that open raw edge, it will fit. Now you can see where I've already sewn that. We've got ni a nice right angle. This is why you leave the quarter of an inch, inch unstitched because you get a nice right angle which will give you nice crisp corners to the cushion once it's finished. So pin together, match up the raw edges and pin between those outer pins. And then sew together along this side, again, stopping at and starting and stopping actually at the seams. Do one side at a time. Once you've sewn one side, take it out, pin it, and then sew the other side and work all the way around until you get back to the beginning. And then it will look like this. You've now sewn the pages loop all the way around the cushion front. Press those seams open and flat. So if you just press them over to one side like this and press them flat, it's easier to do that now. Now take the cushion back and we're going to attach the loop to this. First of all, I'm going to mark a turning gap. So in the right hand long side of the cushion back, fold it in half just to find the centre and then measure and mark two inches either side of that because we're going to leave a four inch turning gap. So just pop some 
hor vertical pins in and then you can transfer these to the pages loop. I'm marking it on the cushion back. It's just a bit easier to do it than on the long pages because they're already attached and we can move those pins in a moment. Now place the pages loop part right sides down on top. You can see which one to place because the cushion front and cushion back need to be the same way up. And in exactly the same way, pin the top edge so that that pressed open seam matches the top. And then press the bottom edge so that the pressed open seam allowance matches the bottom edge. So remember those seams are going to be quarter of an inch up from the bottom edge. If you just match the raw edges, you can see it quite easily. And then pin between. You can now move those marking pins and put them through both pieces so that you're pinning them together. And then you will remember to leave that section unstitched. So just move the marking pin. Now stitch together from the top, stop at this pin, leave that section unstitched, start at that pin and then stop at the bottom. Then take them out from your undo machine, repin to sew the bottom edge of the loop and the side edge and the top edge so that you sew it together in exactly the same way. Once that's done, press all these seams open just like you did with the front and press the edges of the turning gap open as well, to, well over to one side. So you just press them over to one side so they're turned under like this. Now turn the cushion right sides out through the turning gap. Push out all the corners. You can use your fingers for this and then you could use a blunt tool as well to just push out the corners. Just take care you don't go through the seams. And then the important part now, take some time to do that, is take each one of the seams, roll it between your fingers so that the seam is laying right on the edge and then give it a press. Now take the time to do that with all of the seams all the way around the edge. It will just give you nice crisp edges to your cushion and make it a lot neater. So work the way around, all the way around all of the edges and then your cushion will look like this. So you can see all the edges are lying nice and neatly and make sure you don't press any creases into the fronts and backs as you do that. You can now stuff the cushion. Now use a poly ester fibre fill if you separate it first then it won't be clumpy and just put small pieces in at a time take it and always pull it apart to put some air into it and take away any clumps and then stuff it. Now make sure that the filling goes all the way into all of the corners. So what I did was stuffed all of the corners first and then the inner bit. Now don't overstuff it because it needs to lay flat like a book. So just make sure that all the corners are filled and that you just smooth the top and the bottom so that it's actually laying flat. Now once that's done, Take the turning gap and pin it together. So you fold it and press the edges under already. So fold, pin that turning gap together all the way along. Now you need to slip stitch it closed. So take a matching thread, put it into a needle and then push the needle just a little bit, maybe half an inch to the right of the turning gap so that the needle comes out actually in the seam. It's better to secure it in the seam before you stitch it. Leave a long tail, it just helps the thread to stop coming undone and work two or three small stitches on top of each other just to secure the end of the thread. Once it's secure, then you can slip stitch it together. Now you do this by working vertical stitches from one side of the turning gap to the other and then threading your needle under the fold of the turning gap and out at the other side. So it's like working, the other name for the slip stitch is ladder stitch because these vertical stitches are like the rungs. They go from one side of the turning gap to the other, thread the needle under the fold, bring it out and put a vertical stitch into the other side. So slip stitch it all the way along the edge. 
keep the stitches fairly close together. You can see I'm working my stitches about a quarter to a half an inch apart. It doesn't matter, to be honest, if this isn't too neat because this slip stitched edge is going to end up attached to the cushion cover later. But it's important to make sure it's securely close and none of the filling comes out. Now I've slip stitched all the way to the other end. Once you've done that, work a few small stitches on top of each other where the seam is. Thread the needle through a little bit further to secure it. Cut off the end and then you can cut off the starting end as well. Now smooth the cushion, give it a press with your, just with your hands to make sure that it's nice and flat on the top and the bottom and on the sides as well. You can now remove any of tacking stitches because I put some tacking stitches in, extra ones, just to hold to make sure those prints matched up. So if you've put any tacking stitches in, extra ones, then remove those now. Pull out the threads. And your cushion is now finished. So put this to one side, ready to attach to the cover once you've made that in the next step. Making the tab. This is optional and used to keep the book cover closed, but you can leave it out if you prefer. But if you want to make the tab, take the tab outer and the tab lining and place them right sides facing. They're exactly the same size, so match up all of the raw edges. Now sew together along the top edge, down the side and along the bottom edge, but leave the left hand side unstitched so it looks like this. Press the seams over to one side so they're nice and flat and then trim off the corners. This will just help to give neater corners on the tab. So trim across the corner and then take a little piece off the edges as well. It just reduces bulk in the corner so you've got a neater tab. Once that's done, you need to turn the tab right sides out. I'm using a turning tube for this. It's just a lot easier and quicker. So you pop the tube inside, take the stick and push the stick through the tube. If you don't have a turning tube, you'll just have to carefully turn it right sides out. Once you've done that, push out carefully the corners so that you don't pierce the seams. So that you've got nice, neat right angled corners. And then Give it the tab a press, roll the seams between your fingers so that they lay right on the edges and press it so it's nice and flat. Make sure those corners are all pushed open and again roll the seam between your, your fingers and press it. And then top stitch all the way around the three sides. You don't need to top stitch along the other side and that's your tab finished. Assembling the book cover. Now to add some wadding and detail to your book cover outer, it's best to use wadding at this stage. You can use a fusible wadding or you can use a non-fusible. Place the book cover front outer, book cover back outer and book cover spine outer right sides up on top of the wadding. Press into place if you're using fusible or tack into place if you're using non-fusible. You can then also quilt if you want, you can add quilt around the printed lines or around some of the details or use your own pattern and then trim the wadding level with the fabric edges. Now to assemble the cover, place the book cover front outer and the book cover spine outer right sides facing so that the raw edges of the left long side of the book cover front outer match up with the raw edges of the right hand side of the spine outer. Pin together. all the way down the side and then stitch these two pieces together. Open them out and then attach the book cover back outer to the other side of the spine outer. so that you're making one long piece and the spine is joined between the front outer and the back outer. Pin them together at the top and bottom and then pin between.
and then sew these two pieces together. Once that's done, you've joined all the three pieces together. Press these seams open and flat. Now, if you want to attach a tab, you can do that at this stage. So measure the centre of the left-hand edge of the book cover back outer. This is where we're going to attach the tab. So just to find the centre, I've measured all the way down and I'm just going to mark that centre point with a pin. Now take the tab and place it right sides down on top so that it's lying centrally over that pin. So basically, the tab will be sitting in the centre of that side. Now, to make the tab a little bit extra secure, extend the end of the tab by a quarter of an inch so it sticks out a quarter of an inch beyond the edge. It just means it's less likely to get pulled out in time and it just makes it secure. So pin that into the place and then tack it in place along the edge and then a little further inwards. The second row of tacking stitches is just there to hold it in place during assembly and keep it straight. Adding the lining. Take the book cover lining, you can remove the label, and place the assembled book cover outer right sides down on top. Now match up all the raw edges, because they will be the same size, and pin together. Start by pinning together in the corners so that you match up the right and side raw edge, and then pin together in the other corner. When you're pinning together two bigger places like this, pieces like this, it's much easier if you pin it together at the edges and then pin between. Now you need to leave a turning gap in the bottom edge of the book cover outer. So we're going to measure and mark that first. So make sure you find the book cover back and that's where the turning gap is going to be. So if you take a tape measure, measure halfway along to find the centre of the bottom of the back. And then measure two inches either side of this so that you are marking a four inch turning gap. By leaving it in the bottom, the back of the bot bottom of the back edge, it just means it's less visible. Once you've marked that turning gap, you can then continue to pin the outer to the lining all the way around. Make sure that the tab is tucked underneath so that it is sandwiched between and not sticking up at the, you don't want the end of the tab to get caught in the seam. So just simply pin it together and then where you've placed those marking pins for the edges of the turning gap, I can place those vertically so I remember just move them so that they're pinning into the lining as well. And then continue to pin the two pieces together all the way around. So I'm just pinning it together along the top edge. Now you can sew it together. Start at one side of the turning gap. So all the way across the bottom, up the side, all the way across the top. Reverse stitch when you reach the tab, just to give it some extra strength, down to the bottom and stop at the other side of the turning gap. Once that's done, it will look like this. Press the seams over to one side just because it will help to keep the seam laying right on the edge when you turn it right sides out and then clip the corners. This will just remove the bulk because you've obviously got the layers of fabric and the wadding in the corners and will just give you neater corners when you turn it right sides out in a moment. So just open out those pressed under edges and clip them closed. And there I'm clipping the line, the final corner. Just make sure that you don't clip the stitch in. You're just removing the fabric. Now, once that's done, you can turn it right sides out. So put your hand inside the turning gap and take hold of one of the corners at the other side and then pull that corner all the way through to turn the whole book cover right sides out. Now push your fingers into all of the corners just to push them out. That just helps to get everything turned right sides out before you go to get a neater corner in a moment. 
So just to push your fingers inside and then take um, a turning tool. I like to use the stick that comes with my turning tool or you can use a point turner um, or the end blunt curved end of a pair of scissors, but nothing sharp. Otherwise, you will cut through the stitching or the fabric. So just gently push out the corners so that they make nice, neat, curved right angles. And then lay it all flat and smooth it out. Remove the second row of tacking stitches that you placed to keep the tab in place. Because the tab needs to be facing outwards away from the book cover. Now take some time here to press all of the seams so they lay right on the edges. If you roll them between your fingers they will lay on the edge. And also press and fold under the edges of the turning gap and pin those together. That just holds it closed so that you can top stitch all the way around the edge. And then you can see here that I'm rolling the seam between my fingers. Because we pressed the seam allowance over to one side before we turned it right sides out, it's a little bit easier to do. So work all the way around, pressing it so the seams lay on the edge. And then once that's done, top stitch all the way around the edge. This will neaten the edge and also hold the turning gap closed. And then it will look like this. So you've now got the whole book cover assembled with a nice top stitch edge, so it looks really neat. Now, to give the spine some extra structure, stitch vertically down the book cover through the outer and lining, sewing directly on top of the book cover outer seams. This just gives it some structure and makes it easier, it easier to sew the cushion into place. And this is what it will look like when it's done. This completes the book cover. Assembling the book cushion. Take the cushion that you've made and open up the book cover and place it inside so that the seam on the left hand side of the cushion front where the pages are attached lies exactly on the left hand side stitch spine seam of the cover lining and then pin it into place. Make sure you pin it cent centrally because the cushion is a little bit shorter than the book cover lining. It's about a quarter of an inch at the top and the bottom. But just pin it at either end just to make sure that you've got it central. And again, it's about a quarter of an inch and pin together through the cover front and the pages and into the book cover. So you're pinning through all of those layers. Now that those seams that you stitched earlier to show where the sides, this spine is, are really useful. So not only do they help with the stability of the book cover, but they, you can also use them as lines for pinning the cushion along to. So just take that seam and lay it so it matches up exactly with the spine seam and pin it together through all the layers. So you can see here, I'm matching up the cushion seam with the spine seam and pinning together. And then once you've pinned it together all the way along here, we're going to sew it into place. It's much easier to pin and sew one side at a time of the cushion. So take a needle and thread it with some matching thread. And I'm going to start at the bottom corner. Thread the needle through the cushion a little bit of distance away from where you want to start. And pull the needle through, just leaving a short tail on the front. It just helps to stop it coming undone and we can trim it off later. And then in that bottom corner, work two or three small back stitches on top of each other just to secure the end of the thread. Now we're going to slip stitch the cushion to the lining. So you need to work a long stitch underneath the lining and then a vertical stitch across into the cushion. And then a long stitch through the edge of the, the actual seam that joins the pages to the front of the cushion and then go back into the lining. So you're working vertical stitches. So it's like, well, it, the other name for slip stitch is ladder stitch because you're working the vertical stitches of the rungs and then the long stitches of the uprights of the ladder. Make sure as you're stitching that you don't stitch through to the cover front. So check every now and then that you're only going through into the lining. I mean, because you've got the wadding, it's not 
it's it's quite difficult to get through to the front so you probably won't do that but do just check every now and then because if you do get any stitches going through to the outer you'll have to undo them now continue slip stitching all the way along this pin side and then when you get to the top pin the top edge to the cover lining remember it won't come right to the top it's about a quarter of an inch but it'll be the same distance that you've sewn the first edge to so just pin that make sure that the seam that joins the pages of the spine together is laying on the edge and pinning all the way through to the cover now you can slip stitch this edge into place we're actually going to work two rounds of slip stitching just because it helps with positioning and makes it more secure so at this stage don't worry if your slip stitches aren't too close together i've worked mine about half an inch apart here because it's easier to position it if you work the stitches a little bit further apart and then we'll go back and work between those to make it stronger and more stable so i would say about half an inch apart at this stage if they're closer together it doesn't matter and then continue stitching up to the corner. And then just work a little stitch on top, just on top. I would like to do that in the corners. It just helps to secure it. Once you've done that, you can remove the pins and then we're going to work on the other side. So the other side of the the cushion back is now pinned to the other side of the lining again match up the spine seam with the cushion and then slip stitch it together down that side and across the bottom so you can see i've stitched it into place all the way around now as i said we're going to work another row of stitches so we're going to go back all the way back around it's much easier this time because you've already attached it but this time work the sti slip stitches so the actual vertical stitches between the ones you worked in the first round this will make the cushion much more secure it won't come undone and it will also give a slightly neater finish because the gaps that you've got in the slip stitches you won't see so just try to work those vertical stitches about halfway between the vertical stitches in the first round just as you can see i'm doing here and then continue to do that all the way around until you get back to the beginning and then your book cushion Will look like this it's now now all neatly attached to the cover so the last thing you need to do is attach a press fastener or a snap fastener to hold the tab into place so fold the tab over onto the front cover and just pin it into place make sure that it's central so the way I did this is I just pinned it into place and guessed it by eye and then just measured to make sure you can adjust it then. And make sure it sits nice and neatly across the, the other side and that it's not baggy and not pulling too tight. And now attach a snap. I used snap fasteners, but you can use press fasteners. Um, you need to put the male half on the end of the tab and the female half on the book cover. So check to see where the male half will meet the front of the book cover and then attach the press fasteners or the snap fasteners into place so the male half to the tab the female half to the book cover front and then snap it together and that will hold your book neatly closed you can then pop your book in your pocket or anything else you want to store like a sewing kit or your sewing supplies or even your remote controls and your beautiful book cover is now finished making the bookmark if you want to add a little stiffness to your bookmark then press some interfacing to the wrong side of the bookmark front just press it into place and then trim it so it matches the raw edges now place the book cover mark front and the bookmark back right sides facing they're exactly the same size and then pin them together all the way around so that the raw edges match
be able to turn it right sides out, you need to match a turn mark a turning gap in the center of one long edge. So if you fold one of the long edges in half to find the center and then mark with a pin one inch either side of this center point, then that will leave a two inch turning gap along this edge. So just place your pins vertically so that you remember to start and stop stitching. Then sew together from one side of the turning gap and finish at the other side. Once you've done that, press all the seams over to one side and then press the both sides of the turning gap under. Now clip off the corners. This just reduces the bulk in the corners so that you'll get a neater finish. So if you trim across the corner and then take a little bit off either side, it takes the bulk out of those corners. Now, once that's done, you can turn the whole bookmark right sides out through that turning gap. So just put your fingers inside, push out one end and then push out the other end. And then use a point turner or a turning tool to just push it out. I like to push it out with my fingers first and then take the turning tool. Remember not to push it in too hard. You don't want to break the fabric or the stitching. What I find is if you push the fabric onto the tool rather than the tool into the fabric, you're less likely to break the stitching. So just push out the corner so that they make nice, neat right angles. And then press the whole bookmark flat so that the seams are laying right on the edges and making sure the edges of the turning gap are turned under and line up with the seams. And then top stitch all the way around all four sides. Once that's done, your bookmark is now finished and ready to hold the place in your book. So all you have to do now is take your bookmark, pop it inside your book so you can remember your place, put it in the pocket of your cover of your book cushion, Close the cover, do it with the press fastener and your beautiful book cushion set is complete.